Hello and welcome to the Nikon D5200 channel. We're going to have a quick look today at the buttons on the outside of the Nikon D5200. So we're starting at the front and over here, top left as you look at it, is the on off switch and also the shutter release button, which obviously is very important. Uh, just over here, although that isn't a button, that is quite important as well. It's the autofocus assist illuminator. Uh, and that's really useful if your lens is actually finding it difficult to autofocus on whatever it is your subject is, because it, it helps that. It also acts as a red eye reduction pre-flash, so that will go off before the main flash and uh, assist in reducing red eye. And finally, it also operates as the self-timer light, so that if you're using the self-timer, you will know how long you've got before the flash and the camera goes off. Over on this side, you've got the function button, uh, which can be dedicated. Uh, it's very useful, in fact. You can dedicate it to all sorts of things, white balance, uh, to switch it on to HDR, to um, sort out your autofocus area mode, uh, to set your ISO rating, that kind of thing. And then just above it is the flash button. That obviously sets off the flash, or lifts it up, and also if you press this button and then the rotary dial which is at the back which you'll see later you can set the flash compensation so that's also a useful thing to know if we just put that back you'll see those buttons better as we turn it round to look at the side on the side here this is basically uh, where all the sockets are that allow your camera to communicate with the outside world uh, the top one here is the external mic button and then you've got the uh, AV out button, the HDMI, sorry, uh, the AV out socket, the HDMI socket and uh, the USB socket which enables you to either upload or download from your computer. If we just close that again. Looking at the back of the Nikon D5200 uh, we can see that there's a larger selection of buttons here. The one on the top left hand corner which we've had a look at before is the menu button and just to go through very quickly on that because there are other videos on this um, that allows you access to the playback menu, uh, the shooting menu, the custom settings menu, the setup menu, the retouch menu and finally the recent settings menu. Uh, you operate that and navigate through it by using the custom select uh, the multi selector tool here, which we'll have a look at in a second. Uh, but that's the menu button there. As we go across the viewfinder, there's the uh, diopter adjustment control uh, if you want to change the focus of the viewfinder. And down here is the I button, which is very useful because it allows you access to the back screen. If you press this, then it gives you access to the various parameters that you've got uh, and can change directly via this button and through the back screen, again using the multi-selector tool. So you can, for example, change white balance, you can change your ISO, uh, you can do all sorts of quite quick and speedy adjustments by using that button. Right next to it is the autofocus and auto exposure lock button. Uh, which we will go into with more detail later on because it can be a little bit fiddly. The uh, command dial here, or the rotary dial, allows you to uh, navigate uh, through the camera settings, particularly things like the scenes and the effects. Uh, it's not there at the moment, but if I change that to effects, if you look at the top left-hand corner, you can see that uh, you can change the various effects. And likewise, if we did that with scenes, you'd be able to see that we could change through the scenes by using this. The playback button here obviously shows you what you have either just filmed or you have just shot. And that's very useful because obviously you can see what you've just done. And these two buttons here, the zoom in and the zoom out buttons, uh, allow you to either, of course, zoom in and have a closer look at what you've just shot or come out again. And if you zoom out again, once you've got to full frame, then this button will allow you to see the last four frames uh, that you've just shot and navigate around your playback and your, uh, your archive, if you like, 
uh, via the four images on the back screen. This is the multi-selector tool, which is the other real uh, useful way of navigating around. It allows you to navigate around things like, as I say, the, the menu settings, but also lots of other settings. And it's basically uh, got four arrows uh, up and down, left and right, and the OK button with which you select whatever it is you've been looking at. And then finally, down here, you've got the delete button which is fairly self-explanatory, but we'll go through that again at some point. And finally, on the right-hand side of the Nikon D5200, uh, the side, I guess, which would usually be covered by the photographer's hand, you have the memory card slot. Uh, that's all there is. It's very simple to open. Uh, inside, that's the only option. There is no reset button or tag in there, as there is in some cameras and you just press in and out it pops and obviously you just push it back in again and it goes in fairly smoothly. So that is round the sides, the front and the back. Uh, 